Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of Scores from the Record Store. So for me, it's Saturday and what did I do? I hit up a record store, a brand new record store in Long Island, New York at Amityville. It is called High Fidelity Records and yes, it is named after the movie and book. Um, really cool place. Um, met the owner, nice guy. They are located at 141 Merrick Road, Amityville, New York. And, oh man, this place, just tons and tons and tons of stuff. Both records, music, cassettes, whatever you like, they got it. It was very, very cool. And I made out like a bandit, man. I got 20 CDs while I was there. And I can't wait to go through it with you. So I thought, let's do that. Uh, before we get started with it, though, before I run through all of that, uh, of course, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do leave a comment, hit like, all those things do help. And turn on notifications so you stay up to date on everything going on this channel here. Oh, a lot of cool videos, including the fact that I will be putting together a let's go to the record store of my experience to that record store for High Fidelity Records, and you'll be seeing that uh, probably the following day uh, on maybe Monday, I guess it might be. So anyway, let's dive into this here. Sooner I go through this with you, the sooner I get to go listen to it, because I have just gotten home, and I want to make this video with you guys before I sit down to really get into it. So as I said, 20 things here, uh, you know, different reasons for all the stuff that I picked up, and uh, we'll talk about that. So all right, first thing up, Tangerine Dream, Force Majeure. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know, 78, 79, somewhere in that time frame. But uh, recently been getting into this band. Uh, liked them here, there, a little bit of stuff. But, um, you know, always looking to fill in. And they're one of those bands that has a ton of albums. I mean, they put out so many different albums, whether, you know, straight up band, uh, you know, associated stuff, or whether they were doing a soundtrack. But there's just tons of stuff out there. I can't even... Uh, follow whether we're on the 10th, 12th, 15th, 30th, you know, studio album sort of thing. That's just the kind of band that they are. But uh, yeah, when I come across this stuff, I like to pick it up, add it to the collection and dive into it. So I've been looking for one of these for a while. I own this album, but I actually own the UK edition of it. And I'm talking about Thunder and Backstreet Symphony. So this was the US album cover. And it's the one I originally had. And then I got rid of it because I found a UK edition of it. And over the years, I've wished that I had this one back. So I'm actually just purchasing this one uh, to have that one in my collection. The Babies, John Waite, uh, Jonathan Kane was in the lineup for a while. Uh, this is an anthologist of best of and uh, looking forward to digesting that. One of those bands that I got into later, so I don't really know what songs were hits or not hits. And instead of trying to devour each of the albums all the time, I want to just be able to throw something on and hear what was meant to be the big songs by the band and those kind of things do it. This next one here was really cool. Big score for me. Samson, 1988. Colton is the name of the album itself. I've had these tracks uh, gathered up on another album, a version of something, but not the original one like this. So that's really cool um, to have that. Of course, we know Samson from the fact that the uh, original vocalist with them was Bruce Dickinson, but then he left and a number of different guys. And this one is even post having, uh, I think the follow-up guy was Nicky Moore. So this is even after that with a different vocalist. But I've always really enjoyed uh, the music of Samson from Paul Samson. So uh, I'm glad to get that one in the collection. And uh, recently been digging a bit deeper into Roxy Music. And so uh, on top of that, also been digging into Brian Ferry. And I bought this one here, Boys and Girls. Uh, I think this album's from around 85, give or take. And... Um, yeah, just look, you know, I know it's his most popular. I don't know anything about it. I'm really kind of new to that whole world of things. Um, but it's always nice, you know, when I can find something like this for $5.99 and get a copy of that so inexpensive and just be able to, you know, digest and listen to something that uh, of a band that I'm starting to explore is very cool. A little while back, I was getting into this guy here, Frankie Miller, and I bought one of those five CDs that comes in a little, you know, thin cardboard case, um, just the paper cardboard sleeves for each thing. And so when I can find the original jewel case editions of these, I like to replace it. So this one here, Once in a Blue Moon, 
uh, getting that. And his stuff has been really hard to come by. But this visit as a whole was was a lot of that, finding these sort of one-off albums that I haven't seen, you know, in ages sort of a thing. I found a John Kay and Steppenwolf album from 1987. Rock and Roll Rebels is the title of this. Never even heard of this, so that's going to be a fun little listen. All right, then... Um, the Angels, uh, also known in the U.S. as Angel City, but uh, the Australian band. And this album here is called The Angels from Angel City, um, Beyond Salvation, album of theirs. On uh, Chrysalis, uh, 1989 is the release year of this. This was a very cool one here. Original one on Atlantic Records, a group called Banshee. Um, metal music from the 80s itself. This is 1989. And uh, just look at those guys there. I'm definitely looking forward to checking that out. I know they had a reissue a while back, but, I, you know, again, if I can get an original copy, and especially uh, Atlantic Records, I don't know, I have some affinity towards Atlantic Records. So many great bands, so many glam metal bands and stuff that I grew up listening to were on the Atlantic Records label. So when I see the, you know, red spine, the lettering, the red lettering on the spine like that, and I flip it over and I see the little Atlantic logo, I get a little special uh, flutter, I guess, in my heart for those sort of things. I found this. Mark Bonilla Sampler says it's from the album American Matador. I didn't even know he had uh, a solo album. This is Reprise Records, and it's got five tracks on it. And I like uh, what I've heard from Mark Bonilla. I've got some other stuff that he did with uh, Keith Emerson, where he was the guitar player. And so um, this was just kind of a very cool find, something I wasn't expecting. And even though it's not the full length album, five tracks, it's an EP, um, I will certainly take it and enjoy it. And that's uh, half of the stuff so far. We got some other cool stuff here. Uh, Scott Richardson combo. I'm not sure what the C stood for, but um, this album here, I think was like 1968. And I have a compilation of theirs, but this is the album you know, as it was originally intended, and I love that. Um, so if I ever get things that are the two furs, or it's a collection, or it's two albums on one or something, if I can find the original album uh, standalone, I always prefer that. I prefer to have what was originally meant to be listened to just like that, and not some of these other collections and things. Um, recently, I talked about discovering Paul Kelly from Australia. And this is Paul Kelly and the Messengers, and I don't know which album this is, but it is the album that happens to have his biggest song, Dumb Things, on it. And that's the one that I heard, and it was a random song that Apple Music threw up and started playing for me after I was done listening to something else that I knew what it was. And I said, wow, this is really good. What is this? And it turned out to be this guy, Paul Kelly. I bought a Best Of, but I really liked that early era of it. And so this album here... Um, I want to say it's around 85, give or take. Uh, print's too small for me to see these things. I'm going to start pulling out a magnifying glass or something, maybe so I can read some of this stuff on the fly with you guys, but called Under the Sun. And yeah, man, I was just really excited because again, some of these things, maybe they were around before, but I never saw anything from Paul Kelly in various stores that I went to. So finding this now, very cool. I've heard of this band before. and never owned anything by them. A group called... IQ, and this is a live album, and you know, I'm not a big fan of live albums, but I want to try out this band, and the fact that it's just, you know, looks the way they look, and this is straight out of the 80s, and they're sort of progressive rock sounding to me. I listened to a little bit, sampled it before picking it up, um, but uh, I'm going to give this a shot here. Don't know why I ne haven't, you know, necessarily gotten into this band before um, on Giant Records, so i going to do that. Um, found a Wounded Bird release for Richie Fure. Uh, from, uh, where did he come from? He was, I don't know, was he in Poco and uh, a few other bands and around? And I know he has connections to the Eagles and so forth. So, uh, or he was in the Eagles and then went to Poco and vice versa. I mean, I know it's one of those sort of things. So either way, solo album of his, I think it was the debut in 78. This was right before uh, Timothy B. Schmidt uh, came in, I think, to replace him. Of course, he's also from Poco. Um, he was the replacement, I believe, but I could be wrong. I could be confusing that with uh, Meisner, but um, either way, you know, I'll do my homework and my research. We got Timothy B. Schmidt guesting on this, and Chris Hillman, Jim Messina, uh, David Cassidy's on this, uh, Rusty Young, got a whole bunch of cool people on this, so uh, looking forward to checking that out. 
Um, nothing special, but I picked up the Foo Fighters album Sonic Highways. It was only $6.99. I'd been wanting it, but I hadn't found a, quote, used copy of it. This one being still sealed is only $6.99. So I decided just to throw that one in there to, to add to the recent Foo Fighters stuff that I had been picking up. Um, these next two albums I actually uh, own, but don't. Um, again, they came as uh, the one of those cardboard sleeve things in the five uh, albums in a box set sort of thing. And it's Jean-Luc Ponty. Uh, he's technically classified as jazz, but I don't really hear it. Uh, for me, it's just like uh, progressive rock style music. Now, he's a violinist, and it's instrumental, but might as well be listening to keyboards. You know, it's just really good what it is, and I've always really enjoyed it. This is a later one. This is um, 1989, and then this one here, which again is on Atlantic Records, I think is 76. But um, there you go. I love my little uh, red writing on the white spines. Don't know anything about this band here. It's a group called Voices. It's on MCA Records, and... Um, you can see the guys that are there, and it was just one of those things that was sort of like, you know, these guys are going to rock. I, I just can tell that they are, and I'm going to give it a shot for $3.99, 1989, MCA Records, the way that the guys look, I think it's going to be right up my alley. So I'll let you know about this group called Voices. Uh, I was into Uriah Heap picking up some stuff, and I decided to pick up a Best Of. Uriah Heap has nine tracks on it. And again, just that same sort of thing where I want to hear a selection of stuff instead of popping on one era of one album. And so I'll be able to do it with this. And then, unfortunately, I don't know if you guys have heard the news yet, but um, Michael Ward, guitarist, probably best known for being in The Wallflowers, uh, passed away. He was also the guitar player in uh, School of Fish. Remember that song, Three Strange Days? And I love School of Fish, but I didn't know that he was from that band. Um, I had only known him from the Wallflowers. Once I realized he was from School of Fish, it made me readdress or rethink about Wallflowers. I've never been a fan of theirs. And so I decided to throw uh, their big popular album into my cart, so to speak, and check it out. So I did add this, um, you know, bringing down the house, the album that has one headlight on it, which is the really big hit. And of course, that was a huge thing. And it's probably just one of those things that the song was too popular at the time, and I heard it too many times, and I ended up not liking it. And so I never really gave it a chance. And um, yeah, so I just thought, you know, now it is time to revisit it. And now that I know a little bit more about the guitar player from the band, um, Michael Ward, and um, his unfortunate passing, I think he was only 57. So I'm going to be listening to some Wallflowers, checking that out. And certainly you guys should... Uh, do the same if you are a fan of anything that Michael Ward ever did. Celebrate his time in life. That's what music is all about. But there you go. That was 20 CDs that I just picked up from, uh, you know, a new favorite of mine, High Fidelity Records. I definitely plan to make the trip back there. It takes about an hour and a half for me to get there because I'm in New Jersey now. I got to go through New York City into Long Island uh, to be able to get to it. But I tell you, it's worth it. And so if you've never been and you're anywhere around that area, definitely check out High Fidelity Records because you can see the stuff I found. And I spent three hours there and I probably could have spent three days there. There was so much cool stuff. But like I said, I will be making a Let's Go to the Record Store video and I will be posting the day after this one. So that should be Monday. Keep an eye out for that. And uh, you'll really get to see all this place. So, all right, everyone. Take care. Have a good one. I'm off to go listen to my music. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and the start of your week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.